tire and rotator. Again, it's parts and labor, and that parts and labor is at our factory. And it does not include going to the site and removing that part and repairing and getting it repaired and then putting it back in. We do have 90 days on site after the siren system is accepted, which was the end of March. So we have 90 days that the that labor is going to be covered on that part also. Uh, so I think that from that standpoint, the issue needs to be how are we going to maintain, who's going to go out and take the responsibility to take those parts out. You can call Federal Signal and we will arrange to do it on a fee basis, or you can hire a local contractor, which would be more expeditious because local people are going to get in a lot faster than we might. So that's where I'm coming from at this point if anyone has any further questions. Let me just ask you, there was a statement made that there was a, a five-year warranty on the sirens and stuff like that. Was that, was that an accurate statement? There is a five-year warranty on the 2001 rotating siren, the last 30 or 40 years of purchase. Okay. Uh, that's for the siren motor and the siren head on top of the pole. The motor and the head only? That's correct. Okay. Two years on everything else. Okay. Are we approaching the end of uh, the two years on the first 10 that we purchased? We should be close. Uh, because those were put in in uh, January of uh, wait, wait. All right. Well, let me ask, how, long, how many do we have uh, with the five year warranty at this point? Do you, do you have that number? 2001. So we haven't got 30 of them. question I have is um, at this particular point, so it's your recommendation that we do continue to have some type of maintenance on them uh, based on the fact that... I, I wouldn't say maintenance, I would say service, because what would happen at this point is, let's say that uh, a component went out uh, on one of the boards, uh, a fuse blew or something, someone's got to, we do not cover going out to that site, so you need to pay someone to go out to that site check and find out what the problem is, and then replace the defective part. The defective part is covered, and any repair to that part is covered. But the travel to and from the site is not covered. Okay, I'd like to hear from Director Lewis now about this. And, and I concur with uh, this, uh, this uh, plan. Basically, the maintenance of the siren in the areas can be done by a maintenance department. That could be something that they could do. Basically, that only requires cutting grass and things of that nature. But I agree that we do need some type of service agreement. And, uh, and, and my recommendation basically would be just to do an RFP for a service agreement for the L1 Zyrenes and, uh, and go from there. Because, as I say, the maintenance around the areas, and, and, and you have to keep in mind also, a lot of these uh, units are concrete poles. So your recommendation is going to be that we do a RFP and send it out um, uh, for on an as-needed basis, or or what? Uh, basically, a service contract. Yeah. Service contract. So you are you further saying that we need to disregard the contract that we currently have? Uh, basically, yes, sir. Now, uh, how do we include that in?
that needs to be incorporated. So you need someone that knows the radio aspect of it, that knows the technical aspect of it as far as federal signals concerned. Because the radio is probably the most subject to getting knocked out by lightning or other power surges or other damage. And that's a, that's a critical component of what if you remember on the old sirens, a lot of the problems we had was a low band operating system. The radios weren't operating. So if you don't keep the, rock, the radio system operating, that Jimmy doesn't get a report that he's got a bad siren, and the sirens will not activate. Now, as far as the older <coughs> sirens, and I need uh, Jimmy or someone else that's familiar with the system, I think we're only maintaining seven of the older sirens in the current system. Is that correct? Five. Five. Well, let me, let me, let me, let me hope to make a suggestion to this that we, we get with uh, uh, the plan and find out exactly what we need and possibly come back in the next board meeting and we'll do it all exactly what we need. Right now, uh, uh, you know, I'm not a technician, so if you may know there are five that are now operational. There are additional three or four that also need to be included on that. Again, the older ones we talked about. That's that's old two thousand ones. Yeah. Right. Give yeah. us an opportunity to yeah. put all that information together again. We'll know exactly what we're going out to. Yeah. The whole entire purpose, Mr. President, and I agree with you, is to make sure that uh, it's important that people know that we have been transparent and that we are going to be transparent as it relates to uh, what we're doing. And um, I think that it is a good suggestion that we do go ahead and go out for an RFP and we do it at the next board meeting and that will give us an opportunity to get this uh, taken care of uh, in a most expedient way. Uh, by doing it that way, Mr. Plant uh, will be able to help us, and along with I mean, working with Mr. Lewis, they come back and make their recommendations so we can move yeah. forward. Yeah, because uh, other things that, that we need to include in any RFP, I'm adamant that every siren should be inspected every year. And not for so much for maintenance, but you've got other issues. You've got the way the head is attached, the bolts still in place if they've got them loose, because we've got to worry about winds during storms. Uh, there's just a lot of grounding systems still intact because if it's corrupted in any way, that's going to make us more subject to lightning damage. So an annual inspection and batteries of the charges, make sure they're not corroded. And then starting in about four years, you're going to have to start factoring in replacing batteries, which that should be part of the long-term contract. Okay, Ms. Kevin. Um, I don't think it was uh, cleared up whether or not we should uh, request services uh, we should retain a company to provide services or request services on as needed basis. Uh, my suggestion was to request uh, someone. When we consider as needed basis, I feel we will get provided with the immediate services that we need. Uh, say, for instance, you have uh, something that goes on that you want to call a company and you need that service immediately, it might take them a month or so. And I figured if we would initiate a contract, then that would give us the flexibility of having immediate services provided to us. Okay. Okay, then. Uh, so what they're going to just come back? Come back, and, and, and look, I would hope that what the two of you all would do is, is come back with a uh, we'll know it more about what we need uh, and come back and we can put that into a contract and, uh, and go out for I mean, you can put that into RFP. Okay. No, I just have another question. Okay, go okay. ahead. I just have one other question if we're finished with this particular item. Uh, yes, yeah, so there's, there's some other questions from the board. Did you, I, I forgot to ask you earlier, did you show any damage at Lake Heiko? Uh, the Lake Heiko area, the storm, from all indications, it blew down a tree at the power services property. 
But when it reached that area, the Lake High, Lake High Court area, uh, apparently the storm went up and went over it. And there was no damage there at the immediate Lake High, High Court Park area. It went across the street. Other than some trees down. Other than a few trees down. That's it. No structural damage that, that was indicated in there. Immediate Lake High Court area. Okay. Mr. Lewis, that was about the Oh, okay. I, 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 I okay. You okay. go ahead with your agenda. Uh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Flat. Thank you. Mr. President, members of the board, uh, the first item that I have on the agenda is an information report to me for the city of Bowers. They're requesting approval for recurring expenditures for Byron's 911 telephone line for monthly payment. As you can recall, the city of Byron submitted a request to the E911 Council uh, several weeks, several months ago, a couple of months ago. And this information was reported to the Board of Supervisors. And in that request, there was an approval for this request in the amount of $132,928.58 from E911 funds for different uh, uh, items that the City of Byron had requested. In that request, also, there was payment for E911 telephone system, AT&T monthly service charges for monthly fees and uh, for one monthly fee, and I think it was a yearly fee included in that, if I'm not mistaken. Those funds have already been sent to the city of Byron. So basically now they're asking that the county renegotiate their contract with AT&T to include the city of Byron for 911 telephone services. And this is basically what I have here for the board. Uh, <coughs> well, pardon me. We have a, a poster, and I see uh, one of the council, the council lady here uh, from Byron. We have somewhat a some mixed emotion about, I mean, mixed signals from a bar as to exactly what the request field versus what the board of supervisors have, have issued to them. Uh, I received, and I told this in, I received a call from a TV station on the weekend uh, uh, telling me that Byron uh, had projected uh, the radios that we've all and uh, decided to go another direction. Now, maybe I should ask the question: Is that a is that a true statement? We uh, did order radio approved to pay radios uh, this past Thursday. In yes, other sir. words, you no longer want the radios that we are. We have ordered radios. Is that not right, Brad? Yes, ma'am. Um. The board in the last board meeting, I believe, we had all the we had all the third call, uh, six to radio at the on by bound request. Uh, we you have the thirty fifteen was or five radio. And we approved the board approved those radios. Uh, those radios made it here in, in four days, and I can, we can attest to that in four days. This, the next day after they was delivered, uh, Northstar went down and discussed with you all uh, the installation of it, when in fact you, we were told that you didn't want to, you wanted to make some changes even after radio. 
those changes came back to this board, and we made those changes. Uh, I'm not sure exactly, some of y'all may remember in the last meeting where we made all the changes that you all had requested. And the board have, uh, at that point, uh, given the authority to go ahead and make those changes for you all. And as soon as those changes are made, uh, deliver them to you. So my question is, uh, in that these radios have already been purchased by 911 farmers, I guess my question is, uh, how do you tax the taxpayers uh, for additional radios when in fact they are already ordered, they are here, ready to be installed, we made the well, we are in the process of making the changes. And I have here a chronological uh, uh, outline as exactly we've done exactly what Byron wants, and we definitely don't want to work with the city of So either you or uh, either if you want to come and explain to us exactly where where we are with this, we would be happy to try to um, accommodate you all possible. I'm Patricia Crockwell. I'm the dispatcher for about the city of our I did not come prepared to talk about radios today. That's, uh, the chief would like all questions to refer to him in reference to the radios. The only thing that I came for today was to request to be a two staff. Okay. So I don't have anything, I don't have anything broken with the radios to discuss. Chief Thompson was unable to be here today. And since the peace staff was the only thing that was on the agenda, he sent me to talk about it. Well, um, yeah, I'd like to make the uh, motion that they be approved, that the city of Bower be approved to become a peace end. Okay. And just to, for the terminology, for the sake of terminology, it stands for public safety answering point, which actually will allow them to receive right. 911 calls uh, in the city of Bower. So, uh, so moved. Okay. Second. It's been moved. Proper second. Discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Now, let me just ask on that, uh, Mr. On, on, on the telephone you know, that's related to that, have we, have we made sure we have not, before we, we should have, what do we do on the, on the, on the additional telephone line and all that they're asking, uh, AT&T, I think. I have a quote from the community to get all my
requirement for each government body to have to do is whether bond wishes to be placed on the contract, like all other municipalities in the county, and have kind of allocated the reoccurring service charge, or since bond has been given the funds already, whether they wish to establish a separate contract from Hines County with AT&T AT &T, to have their services performed. Now, my recommendation would be to have Bible be treated just like every other municipal body in that they are actually placed on the contract with Hines County. However, since Byron has been given those funds, it would require the city of Byron to actually pay back the funds to Hines County for those first. And then we, and then we pay, pay those Correct. fees. But uh, I was of the opinion, and the reason I asked the question, I was of the opinion that they have requested uh, something different regarding those telephone lines to be done differently, different from the other. Yes, so we may not make any requests. Any any other, we haven't made any requests any different than any other piece out in the county. Oh. We'll be the same equipment and everything. Respectfully, I believe the additional cost comes in where they have to start up. So there's an initial installation cost in addition to the rear contract. We are currently monthly break, so that may be why it is. What I'm referring to is uh, AT&T have contacted us several times regarding it, and, I, and, and, and that was a mix-up, and that's what I wanted to make sure that we straighten that out so we can move forward with that. So what do we need to do to... I guess we need to get confirmation from the city of Ireland whether it has a design to pay back the money that is allocated for these services. And Whichever would be contract. easiest, we will right. either pay the money to AT&T for the initial. The only thing that we got from the 911 council was the first month. That was to put it on my paperwork and it said we were recurring fees, 5000 okay. whatever dollars. And it was actually put in for the big thing that we got, the big check that we got. The initial fee is the 26 I believe, 36000 And we will either cut a PR for that out of our funds or we can take them back in the now and Yes, sir. Uh, if I could make a suggestion, I would like to. Okay, go ahead. Uh, my suggestion is that the Bible will reimburse the county for those E911 fees and then the county take the initiative to go forward with those fees and that contract. And would, would that clear that up? Yes, sir. That AP&T is calling the Yes, sir. That, that AP 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 yes, sir. Okay. Uh, can we then, do we need to officially request yes. that they, uh, uh, you will relate to Byron yes. to, to uh, reimburse the funds and then we'll take the money? Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. President, yeah. you finish Well, I, okay. I was just still trying to make sure, if, uh, how does that then, if you all have, are going to buy your own radios and we have these, already in stock uh, and we have authorized uh, Northstar to uh, in our last meeting to uh, make the changes to the radio and all that expense is still going on. I guess my question is what what do we do from here to if they have officially bought their own radio? I'm not sure what the changes were that y'all said we requested. Because we weren't here for the last meeting. Uh, Byron requested, maybe I should. They requested that three video be modified for a base station. And also they requested that, uh, that they install their own mobile units. And they, was it three or two? <laughs> it was, uh, and then four they requested to be converted to remote mount. Yeah, remote mount. Yeah. So that's the most basic change order. And in that, the uh, manufacturer stated that that would be a cost, an extra cost. And that's what I'm saying. We are so now incurring yeah. cost. I don't know if uh, they have yeah, some work been done. <laughs> the, uh, the, there, there has been some, some a level of effort. Yeah, I'm saying this is. <laughs> Mr. Hallberg, on those, um, which ones were going to be the radio consoles that we used in the dispatch center? There was three of them that were requested in the beginning that we <coughs> had anything changed to them. 
Are those three ones that you're talking about that were requested to have changed? Yes, yes, those are three. Okay, so when you talked with us the last time about not getting consoles because there was not anything that would work with the system, we already made the changes then. I mean, that was months ago. That was before this was approved. Okay, come back here. All right. And explain exactly what was requested and what we approved. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, members. Uh, my name is Nathan Hargrove. At the uh, March 7 uh, board meeting was when the approval was given uh, to purchase the uh, 30 uh, uh, 45 radios, which is 30 mobiles and 15 uh, portables. The uh, spec number for all cash mount mobiles. And uh, subsequent to that, once that was uh, done, I had a meeting out with uh, Chief Thompson out at Byron, and he indicated at that time that some of those radios needed to be converted because he wanted to put three of them in his dispatch center, and four of them he wanted to put in unmarked vehicles, uh, so he wanted those converted to be remote now. Uh, as a matter of fact, as recently as uh, last week, the week before last, uh, we visited with the folks out in Byron, so we could do a site survey. Uh, because when you convert radio to a control station, there's a there's another level of effort in terms of getting it installed. We're talking about installing radio in a building now, not in a vehicle. So we went out there and walked the building and came up with the uh, with an assessment of what it would take to get those radios installed uh, in the building. So those are the things that uh, that were requested as a change at the last board meeting uh, against the original order for the uh, March 7th board meeting. Now, uh, we just voted uh, against the peace act. Uh, and now that uh, they made the change and want different radio, how what how do we how do we now uh, what does the board needs need to do to uh, make sure that we're going down the right path to be able to uh, meet our uh, request? Well, well, one of the things that, that immediately jumps out at me, you know, that, that we have been going down this, this path now uh, since March the 7th. And as I indicated earlier, there's been a tremendous amount of effort expended uh, on, on a lot of people's part. You know, we, we prioritized uh, this deal uh, because uh, Chief Thompson, in his comments, indicated that he was faced with a, uh, with a tight timeline. And everybody that, that, that has worked with us from that point forward prioritized this. Uh, folks over in the uh, Director Lewis's office, you know, they got their requisition turned around uh, right away. Uh, we had some uh, some effort on, on behalf of the county attorney and her staff, as well as Ms. Davis and her staff, to, to prioritize this and get all the stuff lined up to make this happen as quickly as possible. Uh, so, you know, when you look at that kind of effort you, and, and, and the fact that uh, that uh, money has started to exchange hands, you know, to me it appears that this train is a little bit far down the track to say, stop, let's bring it back, and, and it's a dual. So, uh, from my perspective, I have a, a purchase order from the county. I have uh, instructions from the county. And uh, subject, subject to that being changed, uh, I would propose that we continue along the track. Okay. Well, let, let me get a clear understanding here because uh, this is news to me this morning. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, apparently, uh, what has uh, taken place just happened this, this Friday. Saturday. I, I have no idea. Because all, all of this information that you provided is certainly news to me. Are you saying that the city of Byron has rejected the E.F. Johnson radios that were approved by the board? And mm have -hmm. it? Yes. No, no, I have not received anything from the city of Byron indicating that they chose. But have they? But are you saying that the city of Byron has rejected the initial purchase of radios? No, I mean, no, I'm, as speaking, my understanding is and purchase and, 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 and Supervisor Smith right. asked the representative from mm -hmm. Byron, uh, have they changed? They, they did not deny that they had changed. The only thing they said that they had purchased most, they had approved for a purchase of more and radios. So I don't know if they still want to accept the E.F. Johnson's or not, but in all indications, my understanding is that they said they don't purchase radio, right, sir? Correct. Would, would you would you would you come to the podium and give us exactly what the, what what uh, what is happening? My name is Brad Evans from Because we we have not received that information other than for the media. My name is Brad Davis with Commander of Process Department. 
uh, the chief could not make today. Um, he just advised me uh, to let y'all know that he wanted to any questions regarding the uh, um, uh, radio system uh, or radio purchase uh, brought to him. Uh, I will say that um, for all this work that supposedly has been going on over the past month, we've not heard about it. Therefore, we felt like we need to do what we needed to do for the uh, citizens of Byron. Um, and with all this work that's been supposedly going on since March 7th, we've not, we, we've heard, uh, we saw Nathan stop by one time. And other than that, we've heard nothing else. We have a time deadline, and that's what we were going after. Um, we will start June 1st, and regardless of how we, uh, how we get the radios, that's, that's how we'll get it. Um, so, you know, other questions can be done. Uh, ask the chief because that's what he asked me to do. But there have been that of all not use the radio that we have uh, purchased but to get uh, additional radio. Correct, because we, we never once we were um, uh, y'all advised that uh, those 40 uh, radios to be purchased uh, we had one visit, that was it. And we have a time deadline. We, and this is something that we will hit you first. So we've never heard another thing from, from the camera. Well, let me just say one thing that did happen. Uh, when the radio came in for four days after you all requested it, Mr. Hart, is it true that Mr. Hartgrove came down and you all made a different request? That we had to, once you know, found out that the radio was ran, uh, then you made a different request. For these radios to be uh, changed. I, so, I, will work, I will report for that question, Chief Thompson. He is the one that actually uh, has been dealing with Nathan, um, so and, and he did not make it to that. Okay, but uh, it's a clear indication that that you did know we had the radio. No, I, I did not know that we had the radios. The, the count of uh, the city was not advised anything after yes, than what yes, it is. They met, they met with they met with the city. When he came and, made a, and, and we have it here in writing. You made a then you made a request to have those or those radios altered. So uh, you can't say that you you didn't know. No, we didn't say that we did not know, sir. Okay. Uh Mr. Did you have anything? That's basically it, uh, just basically to uh, request uh, concerning the, uh, the 911 uh, uh, telephone line charge. That, uh, that, uh, that, that was my request that the board made a decision on whether they want those lines returned to the county and then the county take the initiative to pay for the uh, startups. So we have the monthly service charges for the city of Byron. So we need a, do we need a motion to? Uh, yes, sir, we need a motion to amend the contract with AT&T to provide okay. the line on line services for the city of Byron. Right. Do we have a motion? Some of them. If they move, proper second, uh, we need three, three dollars if it's true. I'll just have to say it was what Ms. Martin stated. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It's been moved to talk about the discussion. All in favor of the aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Now, I guess we still, but we I don't, we won't do it today, but we we, uh, we have all these radios uh, that's been off. And uh, what we do with them. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what do we do. Well, we have not um, officially received that, that information from you all. But we've never received radios. You, you said they were I'm in. Sorry, said you said that they were in in four days, but we have never received any radios. We didn't know where they were or any anything about them. You know, that's... Did you know that Mr. Hargrove went down personally and... Uh, no, sir. I'm not involved in that with Mr. Hargrove. I've never met Mr. Hargrove. So I, that's between me and the chief. Well, the chief knew. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> the final item that I have is Yes, sir. So the final item I have, uh, we met the board attorney, uh, representative from the county, uh, and myself. We met with a representative from Sprint Next Town, mobile of the city of Richmond, city of Madison. And I think those were all his parties. In reference to the rebadging for Hines County. And, uh, Basically, they made a suggestion for the representative from Hines County to sign off on documents when it came to uh, the start, the, the restarting up the rebranding, reconfiguration for Hines County, and that will include the cities of Brisbane and the city of Madison. Those cities initially in our meeting wanted to uh, have their rebranding done separate from ours, but it was noticed that the gentleman that was over the entire project stated that no, that was definitely not happening. We, Hines County, is the new uh, participants in this rebanding. So basically, they suggested that we identify a person to be the one that would represent Hines County to see to us when the acknowledgement can come back for signing so that more local can get paid through Sprint next deal. So I'm going to make a request that I be assigned that individual to sign, be the signing for incumbent in the college with receipts for payments to Motorola through Sprint next deal for the rebanding in Hines County and Madison, City of Madison and the City of Brisbane. Also keep in mind the city of Madison and the city of Richmond will also have a representative. And that representative will forward, and I'll have to prove their approval. And they will get approval from their respects. I guess that is government body. So I'm just basically asking to be that person from Hines County. I understand. Uh, I can hear me a little with more approval. But, but I guess my question is. There was a lot of a lot of debate about the payment and how and who's going to pay for the rebanding. What the, I know you asking that you be representative. I mean, once you become representative, then you will work out all those uh, all those details. Of the payment comes directly from Sprint Next Bell. The work is done by Motorola. And we'll have to be the one to acknowledge that when the work is done or completed for Hines County and for the city of Madison and Richmond, we have to be the one to acknowledge that these works are complete. And we will forward that information to Sprint next to him, and they in turn will take over the road. Okay. Let's play the board. I believe that we uh, give him the authority to be our uh, uh, contract person for to, to do the revamp. Second. It's been moved in the last few days. Chris, will you read our Resolved to approve the emergency management director, Jimmy Norris, to be the signee on the income. Incumbent acknowledgement receipts for payment to Motorola through Sprint Nextel for the continuation of rebranding of Hines, for Hines County, which is the contract that includes the city of Madison and the city of Richmond. Uh, yeah. I just want to ask a question now. You are going to work with um, the board of attorney as it relates to the documents because of. Very yeah, much so. Okay, gotcha. All of it. Aye. Opposed? Motion is Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I guess this, this element, I guess we will. Mr. Lewis, before you leave, the purchase of uh, uh, Ian Johnson's radio, we can see how uh, we can either utilize those radios or if it's possible for us to turn those radios that have not been modified to 
or you can share the videos, what will the stockage be? Okay. Of course, we have not received anything from officials or from Byron, but it does. And we'll have to, we'll have to take that up later. I know for sure the portables, there were no modifications requested for. So, I'm on that question. And uh, let, let us get a, uh, an official yeah. uh, statement from the chief case. Uh, Mr. That the radio yeah. were in fact just. Mr. I just also wanted to make a personal note on this uh, as well is that uh, uh, approximately a week or so after the radio was released in. I personally called Chief Council on the phone and told him that they were in and talked directly to me. Well, he knew we were in because, like I said, he, had, he communicated to us some, uh, some odd modifications that he wanted to make on the radio once they got to And I had to write it. Okay, Mr. Tone. All right. Uh, the visit we read earlier on the LSBC project. Uh, Checked out. 